Have you ever wondered why your APD hosts, which are actually VMs, still need disks? Well, the short answer is they don't. See, these hosts, they run just like any others, but if you look at the resource group, they don't even have any disks. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three reasons why you should stop using disks, starting with performance. In the Azure Data Center, all of the services are built out in stamps, which are just racks of equipment that all do the same job. Your VMs run on these physical host servers, and the disks run over there on different servers. And that means that there's going to be some latency over the network between the VMs and the disk. But if you would stop using that remote storage and just use the local SSD on the host, performance would dramatically increase. In Azure, this feature is called ephemeral disks. Now, every one of these physical host servers has local storage. An ephemeral disk use that local host storage for your VM disks. That way you get local disk performance. Now, the second reason for using these ephemeral disks is cost. In AVD, your cost comes from running VMs and sending data over the network and of course, your storage. Now you can turn off your VMs and you can not transmit data over the network, but until now you've always had to pay for storage. And just as an example, if you had 100 hosts that all had a 127 gigabyte premium SSD and you didn't change your VM size at all, you just start using ephemeral disk, you'd save about $1,785 a month. And because those ephemeral disks are actually running on the local host storage, you don't pay for that at all. And that's a pretty nice savings, which actually leads us into reason number three, your configuration. Now, of course, all of this sounds super amazing. So everybody should just scrap all their old pools and rebuild everything with ephemeral hosts, right? Well, there is one catch. Since ephemeral disks are on these local host servers, we can't just have them lying around forever. So ephemeral disks are only temporary. And that means that your ephemeral hosts can never be shut down. You can only create them or delete them. Now don't worry because we can solve for this with a little bit of planning. And if you do need persistent storage for some reason, you can always mount an Azure VM disk or just use an Azure file share. And for your ephemeral host to work, your host pool are going to need to use the new session host configuration model. This config lets you define how all of your hosts should be built, including things like your image, your join type, your VM size, and your disk type. Now this approach also makes changes to the pools or building additional hosts pretty much a one-click process. And it's also recommended that you combine the new ephemeral host and the config model with the dynamic scaling plans, which will solve the problem of creating and deleting your ephemeral host so you don't pay for anything until you need it. Here in the Azure portal, you'll wanna to go to your subscriptions and access control. From here, you wanna take a look if you already have desktop virtualization, virtual machine, and power on off contributors assigned to the Azure Virtual Desktop service. You'll also need an Azure Key Vault. And if you go to access control here, you're going to need the AVD service to be a secrets user. Then go to access configuration on the left, and it should be using the RBAC model and you will need the ARM template checkbox selected. And of course, we're gonna need some secrets for the local and domain usernames along with their passwords. And with those basics out of the way, jump over to the AVD portal and let's create a new pool. Pick your subscription, resource group, and region, then give your pool a name, and you'll want to turn on the validation environment since this feature is in preview. Then go ahead and pick your app group type, which I'll pick desktops, and at the bottom you want to select your pool type, and you're going to need to be on pooled for now because personal isn't supported yet. Scroll down, and you're going to want to select yes for the session host config and set your max session limits. Click next. Now the number of hosts that you can build can be anything you want, including zero, which is what I'll do since I'm just gonna build the config, not the VMs, we'll do that later. Enter your prefix, then select your region, what zones you want, and what image you want. And now we have the host VM size. Click over here to change the size. 
Now, not all hosts can support ephemeral disk. Now, at the top here, you could add a filter for ephemeral disk. However, I found that some of these items on the list actually aren't correct. So the best way that I've found to figure this out is go here to the ephemeral docs, and that's linked in the video description. On the left, you wanna check out the FAQ doc and then scroll down till you see this PowerShell script. Click here to run the cloud shell and then click next to it to copy the code and paste it in. Then you wanna pick what region you want and the size of your disk and 127 is the default for all those images in the Microsoft store. And when you press enter, you'll see a list of all of the sizes and what kind of ephemeral disk they support. And for this to work in AVD, you just need something that says that it's supported and it's not gonna matter if it's the OS cache or the temp disk. Once you've got it picked out back in the portal, select that option and hit okay. Now you just need to check this box and enable your ephemeral disk for your host and then pick your displacement and scroll down. Now we need to select our network and our join type and then link the key vault credentials. And then you can click next, select your workspace or create a new one on the next page, select the advanced tab and set up all your monitoring data. And then you can add your tags like all Azure experts do, and then create. Now, once your pool is built, go back to the main AVD portal page and you wanna check out your scaling plans. Now, if you've already got one like I do, you just need to click over here and assign it to your brand new pool. If you don't have one, go ahead and create. Make sure that you select the same region where your pool is located, and then we wanna choose the dynamic option. And then we need our schedule. Now, the one trick here for ephemeral hosts is your schedule VM limit must be 100%. That's because your host can only be running or deleted. We can't actually deallocate anything. Then you'll set your min and max for the number of hosts that you want your pool to span. Then click next and on the other tabs, you can set the time you want, the behavior that you need for the load balancer, and then your min max numbers here at the bottom. And just repeat that for the other tabs and then assign it to your pool. Now, if for some reason you don't want to use a dynamic scaling plan, you can just go to your pool and click on your total virtual machines, and then just click add at the top and put in the number for the amount of hosts that you want in your pool. And you can also click here and view or edit your config, which is just like building the VM that we did before. Now, for those of you like me who have a dynamic scaling plan, after a few minutes, your plan is gonna kick in and when you hit your next time in the cycle, you'll get your VMs building or being destroyed. And now you can just use them like any other hosts in your pools. Now, maybe you need a little bit more of a deep dive in setting up your host config right over here, or you wanna set up your dynamic scaling plan, which is right over there. And happy learning.